Hoi there, it's Skyward Shield. Welcome to week 13 of Football Talks. I am joined by Bill. Say hello, Bill. Hey, hey! This week, there's only one team left undefeated, but we will get to that later. But for now, we will start. We're going to jump in to a game I don't want to talk about because there were, a lot, there were two blowouts this week as people expected. But... One game they thought was that I was going to be a blowout was Green Bay, but what they did not expect was Carolina blowing out the the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Romo threw two pick sixes, and he, in fact, one of those pick sixes after that, he threw another interception to Luke Keekley again. Didn't go all the way, though it may as well have. Then the Cowboys lost 33-14, but that's not what also matters. Not even the fact that they are completely dashed of hope for the playoffs. They don't deserve it anyway. But, Tony Romo re-injured his clavicle. He is out for the season. Bill, were, were the Cowboys too, hes or too hesitant, or not hesitant, hasty, to send out Romo to play? I mean, to be honest, I don't think that they were too hasty. If the doctors cleared him to play, he was ready to play. I mean, if if the doctors clear you, you're ready to play. And, I mean... It's just an unfortunate circumstance that he came back and he played in Carolina's defense, and Carolina's defense is physical. And, I mean, you have two stud linebackers in uh, in Keekly and uh, oh, I forget the other guy's name. It's, it's, it's his running mate with him on. Mike Davis, I think, is his name, actually. But, uh... Those t the, he played a really physical defense. I don't think that they were too hasty. I think they brought him back when they said they were done bring him back. He, they allowed him to have his rest and you know get ready and raring to go. And I just feel like some some people are just really injury prone. And I think at this yeah, like Fo Arian Foster. I mean, I feel like. Tony Romo's one of those one of those Derrick Rose if we go back to basketball he gets hurt every year something goes wrong and he's gone for a while and this is this is Tony Romo's gone for a while uh period and I don't know what the answer is because they have one of the best offensive lines I don't know why he's taking so many shots but I, I I personally don't think that they were too hasty. Yeah. Oh, but Bill, you don't know when I was going through Twitter when this game was happening, oh, how split the fandom was. This is where the real Cowboys fans show up. It's like the ones that were leaving. It's like, well, let's be honest, guys. They didn't have a shot anyway. He would have had a win out, and I... And I could have be I could have believed Dallas, especially after seeing Chicago beat Green Bay at the the return of Brett Favre, no less. <laughs> I have no doubt Ch or Dallas could have done the same thing, but and, just no, it's just not possible. And here's, and here's the thing: is that they're still not out of it. That's the thing. Let's I mean, just say they're, they're out. They don't deserve it. I mean. Really, if you if I if you really want to get technical, I don't think any team from the NFC East really deserves to go. Uh, definitely not the Giants. If if anyone, the Washington Football Team, because they actually are playing at least decent. On I told you they do it. Offense. I told you they do it. I got I some. Mean, I got it, some upsets, right, man? To be fair, you got <laughs> some too. So I didn't, like, I didn't expect. The Washington football team too. They're a good uh, home beat. team, Bill, but they suck on the road. They're gonna go eight and eight and make the playoffs. Um, but really, the biggest issue is they have no running game to take the focus off of Tony Romo or anybody that's. Back it's there. it's to me it's that. They made this. They made the mistakes they used to make in the past. Not like last year. Even when they were down against the Rams last year, they still kept running the football with Demarco Murray, and that's how they came back to win. Yep. But in the, but because they were down ten to nothing, 
Romo already putting the panic mode button on and just playing and just throwing for his life and that cost them. I Granted, mean, they weren't getting much out of the run game, but I'm certain they could have eventually pulled through at some point. But again, Romo got hasty and that costed him his his season. Yep. And here's the other thing is run blocking for offensive linemen is easier than pass blocking for offensive linemen. And you're putting a lot of pressure on your offensive linemen by throwing as many times as they have been doing and not sprinkling in enough running. And it's part of what it is the Eagles problem as well. They're not running the football effectively, and by not running the football effectively, it's getting their quarterbacks killed. And, and their Romo coach. Was, yeah, and their coach. I mean, it's it bad offensive line play because you're throwing the football a lot is going to get your quarterbacks hurt. And Dallas needs to get a running game. That is their chief, uh, one of their chief concerns besides their secondary. Well, all right, Bill. Now here's a question. What should they draft in the first round? Because they have many options to consider. Despite you would think would be one of the most complete teams when Romo's at the on the, at the helm when they're not when he's not all of a sudden they're about as what's a team I can think of that's has talent, but has no quarterback. I mean, I'm not going to go Eagles. I'm not going to go Eagles, because their defense is trash. Nobody, everyone's it, saying that they're not, but they are trash. It reminds me of when Peyton Manning, when he got his neck injury with the Indianapolis Colts. That team was a 13-3 and team perennially with Peyton Manning. And the minute he got injured, the minute he got injured, he wasn't there for the entire season. They went two and fourteen. I mean, yeah, and they drafted Luck. I mean, it tells you that overall that this one quarterback is hiding a lot of deficiencies in both the offensive line because he's getting the offensive line in the proper spots where they can. He's making changes at the line where he's sliding protections and covering blitzes coming at him where he can hit open wide receivers. And that masks a lot of problems, and a lot of winning can occur if you have a smart quarterback that knows what he's doing back there. All right, so, yeah, let my question stands. What would they draft first? Because look at their options now. They could draft a quarterback and put him be be, uh, behind Romo a la Favre to Rodgers. Um, draft a running back, which I think they can make it another year without one. Or a secondary player. Or a defensive lineman. Because I don't know if Greg Hardy is going to last there. I, I think what they need to do is draft a secondary player first. And then you can find a bargain quarterback in the second round. And if he doesn't pan out and he's not learning the offense fast enough, you'll always have a first-round pick the following year. You know? So I feel like if, there's, if you don't see that quarterback of the future in this year's draft, and I feel like there's about two of them. Well, there's, which uh, ones? Con there's Connor Cook in Michigan State. Is he even going in? Is this his senior year or his junior year? Because there's yes, a lot of... Is... What? I think this is his senior year. This is uh, his final year in college. Okay, because and... I could... Because I heard that there were quite a few quarterbacks, and I think even the one I want for Houston, Jared Goff, is not going to go in the draft this I year. Mean, Connor Cook is about six foot five. You know, the B typical... B he's like the... a Big Ben, from what I'm told. Yeah, he's, he's the... He's the big guy, but he can still run. He's a Big Ben-style quarterback. So what's his downside? And obviously, every quarterback is his downside. I think some of it is uh, uh, more middle-of-the-range stuff. He has the big arm. He just he he falls into the Joe Flacco 
type where he can throw the football down the field, but he he has a little bit of a deficiency at touch passing, which you can develop, obviously. Teaching teaching an arm to throw 70 yards, you can't do that. But teaching someone how to touch pass, you can do that. Yeah. Well, I can only hope the uh, Houston drafts him. But who's the other guy? I mean, I was uh, going to go Goff if he comes out. I don't think he is. Um, I would. Ch I'm gonna have to check. We're gonna check into this later. Or I will for sure. But anyway, I'm gonna go with a um, with a quarterback and put him in behind Romo because it's gonna probably go to where ironically Manning to. Uh, to Brock Osweiler, which we're gonna talk about him later, but you see, you know where I'm going with that, right, Bill? Yep. The the yep, young guy I... will take over when they've just had it up to here with Romo. Sadly, it's it sucks for Romo because he should. I think he deserves a ring, but it won't happen this year. Maybe next year, but you know, that's the th when I'm I'm kind of a dick to Dallas fans right now, and I shouldn't be, but. I'm like, when I tell them there's always next year, it's like, oh wait, you guys keep telling yourselves this every fucking year. Well, to be fair, 30 teams say that all the time. 30 other yeah. t uh, fans of teams do that all the time. But you, you get my point. The Cowboys seem I mean, to have it have a worser case of maybe next year than others. Yeah, I mean, the Lions, we've been promised every year, uh, at next year. No, for you guys, year, it's next lot. year. Maybe we'll have a winning record and a playoff win or two. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've only seen one playoff win in my life, and that's the only one in the last 50 years. So, I mean, I got to see a Lions playoff victory, and I should have had two, but a, a, a certain crew that has been suspended from the Monday night game that just got pulled off the Monday night game uh, was working that game. Oh, they're gone. But um, anyway, Bill. Uh, so enough for Dallas. Let's talk a little bit about Carolina. I'm going to be honest. I can't see them losing another game. They would have to be... They would have to be playing horrible for that to happen, and I don't think so. I mean, what do they have left? They have two against the Saints who have looked god No, off. one against the Saints, two against the Falcons, and I think one more against the Buccaneers. Yeah, I mean... And one against the schedule. Giants. The I only... Mean, the only teams that could possibly upset them is if Atlanta got their shit together and played like they did at the beginning of the year, or the Giants. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, the Saints are an awful mess right now, and the Atlanta... I, I don't see how Atlanta's beating them at all. It's... And... I hate saying it, but I'm kind of rooting for the Giants to do it, but I don't think it'll happen. I mean, they've done it in the past, but I... You know a sleeper team that could beat Carolina that everyone would overlook is Tampa Bay. Yeah, but do they play at Tampa Bay, or do they I'm host sure. them? Because uh, I think I mean, that kind of matters. I mean, Carolina's defense is legit nasty. And I wouldn't want to play them any time of the night. I wouldn't want to play them this I, year. They, I'm going to say, are... though, I still think Carolina or the Cardinals' defense is better because their front seven is a lot better, in my opinion. They're, and, well, I, I feel... I've got nothing against the secondary for Carolina. I think they're they're the second-best secondary in um, the NFC. But, I mean, you got you got Patrick Peterson and Honey Badger. I mean... Justin Morgan is uh, nothing to sneeze about, and Luke Keekley and Mike Davis. Oh, of course, bring Luke Keekley. Luke Keekley should. In the... I think Luke Keekley punched his Pro Bowl ticket with those two balls. I mean, Luke that he Keekley, picked up. Luke Keekley is. Uh, I I won't lie. He's one of my favorite players in the NFL. He he's just legit a legit nasty player, and I love it. I love mean nastiness, and Luke Keekley plays with a tenacity. I love it. Yeah, but um, I, I I you know what's sad? I really wanted the Panthers to go perfect. If they if they got perfect in uh, New England, went perfect. I would have loved for those two to meet up in the Super Bowl, but it's not happening now. Yeah. It's impossible. The most yep. I can get is fifteen and one. But I mean, 
I I I don't feel like uh, Carolina's gonna lose, and the, they I can only like, lose in the playoffs, which I can only yeah, think of one team, Arizona. And uh, I I feel like New England's not gonna lose anytime soon after this because I feel like they were robbed. But we'll I think they're to gonna lose later. one. I think they'll lose one more, and we'll see. But anyway, let's talk about the other Thanksgiving game, the one before this. What did I say? What did I say? I called it. I told you that New, New, uh, Philadelphia was going to bomb it. Maybe I was a little late because technically it happened against Tampa Bay. But it happened. Detroit dropped a 45-point bomb on Philadelphia in Detroit and just punished Punish the Philadelphia Eagles for for existing. Those are the games I love to see, Bill. Those straight up slaughters. Philadelphia got stomped 45-14, and Matt Stafford credited Jim Bob Cooter, and absolutely so. Here's here's a fact. Um, Stafford, uh, Stafford, and uh, Ziggy Anza, who finally showed himself. Tied the sack record, tied the sack, the top sack record for the for the season with J.J. Watt before you know J.J. Watt got two sacks on um, on um, Drew Brees on Sunday, but those two got uh, players of the week and Jim Bob Cooter got coordinator of the week. Bill, I'm... Jim Bob Cooter for president. If not, make him. If not, then uh, Martha Ford for president. Because what I don't know what she told them, but they have won all their games since. And thank God for Martha Ford. Got rid of the garbage that was Joe Lombardi, and we roasted some eagles. It was. I told all... you he'd be, he'd be feasting on some bird, but Bill. You know, before you say it, I almost nearly called her Martha Stewart. <laughs> but um, continue. I mean, uh, you know, there's nothing quite like Thanksgiving morning in Detroit when you, you you can smell dinner being cooked. The game is playing. It's just after the parade in Detroit. You know, it's been a tradition. You know, watching the game every year after you, it goes parade. Game, dinner, you know, that's typical tradition around here in Detroit. That was and Stafford's best, one of Stafford's best games. Five touchdowns, no turnovers. The best, the best thing about it is, is that Mark Sanchez reverted to his butt fumble days. He didn't get a butt fumble, Ziggy on the strip sacked it, but you know what, I'll take a fumble regardless. I mean... I don't. As long as bad M Mark Sanchez shows up, I don't care, you know. But the offense of Detroit is clicking under Jim Bob Cooter better than that garbage coordinator Joe Lombardi. He he is absolutely the worst offensive coordinator in football. He he just no uh, that. I swear, he should be a quarterback's coach. That it may be at best. He is not offensive coordinator material in the NFL. Uh, I mean, the offense is clicking now. You have Kelvin Johnson going off. You have Matt Stafford going off. You have Theo Riddick. You've got everyone involved on the offense, which should have been the game plan in the first place. In week one, and that it's actually clicking now, and the Lions dug themselves back into relevancy and are actually on in the hunt playoff bracket. They're actually in the hunt for the playoffs, even starting one and seven. Martha Ford must have lit a fire under them because she probably go uh, she probably went into the uh you get free cars for room. life if you go in the playoffs that's what she told them <laughs> uh, I, i'm i'm thinking she probably went into the locker room and said okay here here's the here's the deal there guys if you don't win and if you don't play up to your full potential 
I'm going to make sure I get rid of every single one of you. And make sure you never work ever again in the NFL. That's probably what she threatened. You know? And she's she's an old owner. She she and she has a lot of sway in the NFL because it's the Ford family, you know, that's Henry Ford. You know, it's the Ford family. You just can't ignore the Ford family. So, Bill, let me ask you a question. What's the most disrespectful way to get a touchdown? I mean, Desh Deshaun Jackson's always been that person. He did it today, or not today, he did it Sunday against the Giants, which I loved. But, that's the second time he did a touchdown like that. But, what's the most disrespectful way you can think of? I, I would say if a opponent wouldn't get on the ground and roll into the end zone, that would be the most disrespectful way. Well, they of, they couldn't have been touched first off. Yeah, not touch and just roll into the end zone. You know, like, everyone's saying, like, "Oh, just jump over a player, do a somersault like Anto or a front flip like Antonio Brown." No, I, mean, you, I can name I mean, a better one. A cartwheel would be one where... Oh, good luck. You, know, you have or, to hold the ball. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> you have to do a, a three-style cartwheel with only one hand I mean, and your legs. But, Bill, I can name a better way to disrespect, uh, disrespect a team while getting a touchdown. Walking into the end zone. <laughs> That's what Golden Tate did. I loved it. Just oh, it's, Don't mind me. Just getting the touchdown. Getting six points. I mean... We won't be seeing them for a while, hopefully, anymore. Who? I don't want to see them, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. Bill, what are you talking about? Anymore. I would play them every week. If you're going to slaughter them like this, and you'll get 9-7 and seven and be have a chance at the playoffs, though. You'll still need help, but it's possible. I mean, I mean overall, I love the Lions' effort. The defense came out and played. They played lights out. And it helps to have an offense that stays on the field for longer than three plays before you punt it. That that garbage coordinator we had before that was getting us a bunch of three and outs. Now with Jim Bob Cooter, we're moving the football. Look, Our Bill, defense gets I, the I want you to we're better. I want you to see the rest of the schedule. Home to Packers. I think they could easily win that. At Rams. Maybe they could win that if Nick Foles is playing bad. At Saints. Do I really need to make a case for the Saints? Home to 49ers. But the only one that I consider maybe a little shaky is the Bears, because as much as we shit on Jay Cutler, I don't think we can say he's a bad quarterback after beating Aaron Rodgers in Lambeau. I'm, I'm still not sold on their defense, though. That's, fa you know? that's fair, but I'm just saying it's a shootout, and it's first to slip up. Oh, yeah. It's first to slip yeah, up. I mean... And in a shootout, you never know... When defenses will suddenly, oh, let's start playing like a defense and it and turn o turn the ball over. It really comes down to this game with Detroit, but we'll get to that when we get to the picks. Yeah, I mean, but I'm just overall, saying, can you not see them winning all five of their last games? I I, I mean, as a as a Detroit fan, I always I'm always cautious with the team because. The minute I say something good about the Lions... Well, then don't. They, they I will go, say it. They, they go into shit mode. Well, go <laughs> ahead and pick against the Lions if you want. It's almost been working. <laughs> well, I picked, I've, I, I, picked them, I, I picked them against Philadelphia. And, I was and Oakland in. and Green Bay. You di Bill, you've already won the picks. I can't turn it around, but I've already conceded it anyway because you picked the the Lions to beat the Packers in Lambeau. <laughs> yep, and 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 I also I also uh, shocked you with that pick because you know after what I was saying for the previous few weeks where I was I was done with the Lions, they're done, it's over. Yeah, and it, that was well, like oh fuck it, I'm gonna pick just because Martha Ford made them play good. And he said, oh, yep. they'll win, and they won. But, yeah, I can say they – I'll say that I think they can win all their games, but I still think they'll need help getting in. Oh, yeah. Because That's... it's – the problem is Seattle and Minnesota or Green Bay because both Minnesota and Green Bay are getting in. What – my 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 big thing is always this. You need to get to 10 wins. 
And if you add up the five games that they have left and they win them all, that's only nine. And guess what? Guess what game that we got stolen away from us would have made the difference? Seattle. Yep. Yep, that actually yeah, that would have been crucial cuz then you'd have an edge, but they have an edge if they if you tie in record. So guess, guess what our record would be right now? 5, Five and six. 6 right in the playoff chase and we'd be right there. But nope, we're 4 and 7 Bill, because if, of idiotic referees. If I were you, I would root for the Vikings this week because if they beat them, all the Vikings have pretty much clinched the spot, which they need it. And then if the Cardinals win or beat them, then they tie. But that's what's the the problem. You have to hope for the Ravens to beat them at their place. Then they gotta they host two games at the Clink with the Browns and the Rams. Come on, <laughs> they they easily have it, Bill. That's the problem. They got two losses, I see, but who knows? But anyway, that would be the most miraculous comeback. I've ever seen for a football team and get in the playoffs after going one and seven. I mean, it's never happened before, so Yeah, well time someone's gotta make history. But Bill, I am I am I last thing I'll say, Calvin Johnson. I Chip Kelly's called a a freaking uh a freaking genius. Well, what kind of a genius puts a rookie to block Calvin Johnson? Definitely exactly. deserves to be fired. I would have fired him then and there. Like, Come on. You've broken basic football common sense. I mean... But, no. Maybe maybe he is a mad genius and all this will work out next year, but... Will he get it next year, year? They are done. They're done. I don't see them getting it next year. Which, it's okay. But <laughs> it's it's alright. I'm, I'm thinking John Harbaugh is staying... Or Jim Harbaugh is gonna stay at, at Baltimore, so then it's fine. I have no fear. I don't want John or Jim Harbaugh to go to Philadelphia or Indianapolis. I want him either at Baltimore or some other team. Just stay away what? from those two teams or any teams in those division for that matter. I'll be okay. But anyway, right. let's move on to a team that has now been stained with a loss. <laughs> New England, with only Gronkowski as their weapon, which they lost to, and they lost Dante Hightower on defense. Everything collapsed, and Brock Osweiler mounted a comeback. In overtime, C.J. Anderson runs all the way to the end zone. It is over. The The Broncos beat the Patriots 30-24. to Bill, yep. I'll be honest. Snow game this soon. I was I like that atmosphere. Not like the Patriots aren't <laughs> used to that already, but right. What a horrible loss to not only lose Gronkowski, which it wasn't as severe as we thought. He's week to week. He might come back this week to play the Eagles, which I hope he does. They need him back. Um, but then when they lost Dante Hightower, that defense collapsed in on itself, and then they were just playing horrible, getting flags. I know. Bill Belichick is going to hammer them all, especially Patrick Chung for that costly, uh, that costly penalty. Because there was a that on that drive or on that play, um, I forgot who got the sack. Someone got a sack on uh, Brock Osweiler. That would have been essential. But the flag gave him a first down, and they got it in. Yeah. But Bill, I don't know if um, I I have a question for you. I know this is not related to the game. If people are saying it all the time. Has is Peyton ever coming back? Is Peyton ever coming back? I mean, I think he's gonna try to give it a go. I just don't know if I don't. I don't know if they're gonna allow him to come back. But I, I think we've seen the fine. I, I think the Broncos will give him a chance in the regular season to come back. I just, I feel like this is an injury that's a season-ending injury because I've seen it lead to, in in my own real life, I've actually seen someone that's been dealing with plantar fasciitis, and they had to have surgery on it. And 
that's that's a surgical procedure waiting. If Pain Manning can't step on his foot and la- plant on it, he's not going to get anything into those throws, and it's not going to go away until he has the surgery. And I I just feel like I feel like he's getting to the point. He had to talk himself into coming back this year, and I feel like if if he's injured again, I feel like he's done a retire. I think we've seen his final. I think we've seen his final game, and it was breaking the all-time passing yardage mark, and that that's gonna be his hey, final. Game. You know what's sad? He couldn't break the one the other record. Most wins. Yep. He's but under. I mean, he's tied with Brett Favre, but there is hope, I think, and it comes in Week 17, which by then they should have all but locked up their division. That's if they. That's when they host the Chargers, who I think might be like four and eleven or five and ten on their fi- on out. their final game, and I think the Broncos will start him and play him to win that game. And then he'll break the he'll break the win record, and then he can he can retire. I mean, you broke the record; it's fine. I'll put it this way: if if you're gonna start Peyton Manning, he's going to be your starter for the rest of the year. If you're not going to start Peyton Manning and expect him to be a backup in the playoffs, he's not going to start for you. So, I feel like it's an all or nothing. He, it's either his team and he takes them to the playoffs and he wins games or he's going to just, you know, be the backup. He's not going to want to come in and play second fiddle and be be like, oh, yay, Peyton Manning got, a, uh, got the wins record. He's not going to want to do that. He's going to want... He's, he want he'll want to feel like an included part of the team. Yeah. Well, Rather if I don't ha- than, what? Oh, he broke the record for us. Yippee! You know. Yeah. I, I feel like he's that type of person. Yeah. So, Bill. And so now that that's been said, with the Patriots, how do you how do you feel on them now that they have been stained with a loss? To be honest, I felt like they didn't really lose that game on their own. I feel like the referees had a little bit of uh, had a little bit of something to do with that because a lot of the penalties in the fourth quarter were going against New England, and a lot of them were ticky tack kind of garbage calls. Oh, of course, offensive pass interference on Gronkowski, which it really wasn't. Exactly. I mean, that's one. There was the uh, holding call in the end zone. There was all sorts of stuff, you know. I mean, overall, I feel like I feel like the game, they, they got kind of shafted in, in a sense from the game because that that one call that gave the Broncos first and goal at like the two after they had a sack and it forced them back to the 19 that changed the entire game it changed the entire game because then the patriots had to come go down all the way down the field and uh kick a field goal just to force overtime yep and what's unfortunate um, they couldn't. The Patriots couldn't do anything once they got the ball in overtime, and then you know what you know the rest. So now yeah. there's all the hype on Brock Osweiler. He's gonna run this team. I think he, the crazy thing is, I think he might now. He's had plenty I of mean, time to develop. I see no reason why he should fail. And here's the other thing that irks me about Brock Osweiler, and it's just this concept that, oh my God, he's He's doing so great. What has he done, really? He's thrown, what, two touchdown passes and, what, two or three interceptions already? How is that better than Peyton Manning? Most peop- it's not better than him. Most people would argue in this case that it's because Gary Kubiak's allowed to really run through his plan, and that's what's going to decide 
uh, Brock Osweiler keeping the job over Peyton. It's because he could do I mean, stuff like the boot, and uh, I mean, you know you what I'm. You have the greatest quarterback, one of the greatest quarterbacks of the generation. I'm playing for your team, and no matter what, he was still six and zero, and you know, I mean, I just, I, I would go and ride with Peyton to the very end. And then he'll retire because I feel like he's gonna retire at the end of the year. And then you can then you can say, okay, we're done with Peyton Manning. Now we get to where it's the Brock Osweiler show. There's no there's no clouds over Osweiler's head where he has to answer questions about what Manning's feeling like. And then Manning doesn't have to you know cow tie to Brock Osweiler and. There's no, there's no strike in the organization. Yeah, but um. So Bill, now I have to ask. I still have to ask. Um, do you see the Patriots losing any more games? Because I see them going fourteen and two as always. I mean, I don't see them losing another game. I feel like, I feel like this is gonna light up another fire under the Patriots. It just. It they, it just doesn't add to their fuel, to their fire. I mean, they're going to get guys back. It's only a matter of time before they get Gronk. It's only a matter of time before they get Amendola. And it's only a matter of time before they get Edelman back. And They need that bye week. Them, they're going to get them back at the perfect time when they need them because, really, they, they practically have their division clinched anyway. Yeah. But, um... Anyway, anything else to mention about this game? Overall, I felt it was a pretty good game. It was a re- a lot of throwing, even in the snow. It was it was a really highly offensive game for a snow game, and I really enjoyed that. I love snow games. That obviously it's is... really that's when they run the football a lot when it's cold. Yep, cold and snow games, and uh, it was it was a uh, it was a break from tradition. And it was refreshing to see the football game aired out. I don't know how many snow games we're going to see, so it's I, always... Well, considering it happened at the end of November, I think we can assume we have yet to see the end. Well, the, the, uh, according to the forecast models, uh, a, lo- a lot of northern cities are supposed to be... A, a, it's an 80% certainty that we're going to be warmer than average for the first half of December. Wow. Even though we're getting snow already? Yep. Alright, well, I can assure you that's not going to happen this coming week with with the Bills and the Texans unless something changes. Because it's, it's going to be cold, that game. But, yeah, I don't think it's going to snow. But, speaking of the Texans, they're the last team to talk about. Houston punish the Saints as well. Not as much as the, the Lions punish the Eagles for existing. But... <laughs> The Texans snapped a touchdown record for um for Drew Reeves for getting so many games with a touchdown pass. Nothing. Only six points. And the Texans nope. played suffocating defense again, stamping out the Saints twenty four to six. I feel like this is always the score now. Last two last game they won it was against the Jets, twenty four to seventeen, but still Ever since that Dolphins loss, look at, aside from the Jets, what have the other teams have put up in total points? Like 10? No. <laughs> six, six, six. The devil is at work, Bill. Oh, God. But, no, and uh, joking aside, yes, they have played suffocating defense. They have played just like they used to, if not better, than last year. They have not. They have turned. They have made the the uh, the opposing team turn the ball over. It's given them the. It's given Houston the position. And Brian Hoyer is playing a little bit better, but he did throw a stupid throw at led to an interception. That proves to me, yes, he is still Brian Hoyer. Just don't put him in those situations where you have to come from behind. Because if as long as he feels like the offense is in control or the Texans is in, con- in control of the game, then they'll likely win. But. Yep. If they, if the other team scores, I don't know, let's say, ten points first, all of a sudden he has to play come from behind, and that's when things go bad. 
And that's where I thought these guys are going to lose some, a lot of games because of that. But regard, this is the sad thing, Bill. I don't want Houston to get in the playoffs, but it's looking likely that they will. These, these next two games are really their most challenging. These are the only games that stand in their way from being a playoff team. Well, technically three with the Colts, but yeah. So it's at Bills, then home to Patriots on Sunday Night Football because that got flexed in because Baltimore sucks. And then at Colts, they could possibly make history and beat the Colts at um, Indianapolis. By then, Andrew Luck might be playing. They said he might be playing at the end of December. And last time I checked, we're gonna the, that game's the twentieth. Then the next game against at the Titans, twenty seventh. Then January third is the last week of football. Yep. So, Bill, I have to ask now: Do you think they're gonna keep Hoyer if they make the playoffs? I really don't want them to. He's not the answer. No, no. I I I feel like they're not explore options even if they make the playoffs. Well, first things get, first, they have to hope that someone's available. Because if they I make mean, the playoffs, they're going to drop. And even then, they're already pretty low. If the season ended now, I think the Texans will be picking around the 20s. Yeah, I mean, here here's the issue. is There's always that one player that falls down the draft. Luke Keekly. You would you would say he would be what a top two, three, four pick in the NFL draft? He was pick number ten. I mean, there's players that fall, and the Texans might be in position, and it also also depends what teams in front of them need. You know? Yeah. I mean, well, let's see which teams need a quarterback: the 49ers, maybe the Browns. Look at the Broncos. The Broncos got Shane Ray, uh, who I wish the uh, Lions would have got still, but they got Shane Ray, and Shane Ray is a damn good linebacker. He might have had issues, but he's a damn good linebacker. Yeah, and I thought Shane Ray was going to go up a lot earlier, but I think those issues were what made him drop there. But Oh, yeah. Um, I... I don't know. It depends on what other teams draft, and I don't. I think this is the best year because it doesn't look like many teams need it. The Titans already have Mariota. The Jets might need one, though. I'll be honest. The Jets might do because Fitzpatrick. I'm not saying he's not the answer. He's good for them he's, right now, but he's old. He's getting yeah, old. He's old for one. He's like and two. Oh, he's no two. He's a stopgap. Yeah, so this guy will buy them time. I think he'll they'll probably sign him to a two year contract and he'll play fine for the for the first year of that contract, but the second one you'll start seeing that decline. So if I were them, I would consider drafting a quarterback, but they did last year in the third round, so they might not. You see where I'm getting at? So yep. the real so really the teams that need one are the um it's just the Cowboys, the forty ers and Maybe the Browns, because clearly Pettin, a.k.a. worst coach of the year, wants to just <laughs> cut Manziel. Go ahead. In fact, cut him or trade him to Houston. I'll t we'll take him. I think I Bill O'Brien can snap him into shape. I mean, and the other thing is that he would be closer to home and his parents, etc. Yeah, he would have a family connection. The only thing would be is that he'd be also closer to his playboy, you know, you know, lifestyle that he had in Texas. By that you know? logic, he would be perfect for Dallas because you can be a fucking playboy like Dez and no, nothing bad will really happen. I mean, for God's sakes, if they if D Dallas gets Greg Hardy, why the fuck not? Let's why don't they petition to trade for I mean, for Johnny Manziel? I mean. It, it, I could see it happening, really. They, well, well, considering Dallas's moral compass, I think anything's possible. <laughs> but um, I, I think they're not trying to steer away from uh, controversy, though, in the future. Well, they could. Well, you know, it seems when they replace one controversy, they get another one in its place. What was last year? I don't know. Oh, last year was really jo uh, Randall, and now he's gone. But now it got replaced with something worse, Hardy. So what would I rather have, a guy who decked his wife nearly to death, or a guy who likes to go out and drink? I mean, to be fair, you know, I mean, I would rather have 
neither. Yeah, but yeah, you know but Dallas, then... they love their attention. Why do you think they get these players? They stay relevant. But yeah. that's besides the point. So, Bill, I'm hoping D Houston will still draft a quarterback despite if they make the playoffs, but I do expect um, Brian Hoyer to probably implode either at this next game or the one after. <laughs> and that should make it clear that, yeah, if you, even if we get in the playoffs, he's still not the answer. Maybe we can I mean, keep him while we train the other guy over we draft. Brian Hoyer is the second coming of Matt Schaub. Exactly. Well, except Matt Schaub was good at the beginning, and then he just yeah. dropped. But somehow he he got the freaking Ravens to win a game. <laughs> it wasn't on but him. I'm, it wasn't, uh, but it it, wasn't because of him, though. <laughs> yeah. But Bill, I still don't I still don't know because freaking Bill O'Brien loves Hoyer. So that's my problem. It's this this coach's like like, you know, preference for him. It's a bias. Yeah, he he's got a man crush on Brian Hoyer. That's the problem. For no apparent reason. If they lost three of these next five games, which I think almost all are winnable, maybe minus the Patriots, depending on how many weapons they get back. Right. But um with all five of them, they could lose. I think they can win. I think they can win three of them. They're division games. I think they can win all three. It's just these next two. But Bill, let's talk the defense. Watt got like two more sacks. Um, Kareem Jackson came back into the game with that interception near the end zone. Honestly, he ran into into Clowney, so he slowed down. But if he just moved a little more to the right, I think he could have taken it for a 99-yard pick six. Right. I don't know about you, but I would have loved to see that. But yeah, here's the crazy thing. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's gonna. I don't know if this could carry them in the playoffs. I think it, depending on who they play, because if they play. If they host the Chiefs, or what's the other AFC team that's likely? To, oh, Pittsburgh. I don't know if even they could stop Pittsburgh's defense if Roethlisberger's at quarterback. But you know, Mike Tomlin's either I am the most bold coach or I'm the most conservative, like as proven last week. Oh, we're down five points and our defense has been playing terrible. Oh, I'm gonna kick a field goal at at, at the two. By the way. I'm not kicking a 50-yard field goal. No, I'm kicking a 20-yard chip shot. And I'm going to hope my defense could stop Doug Baldwin. So who knows, but... You never know. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> All right, I got interrupted. I kind of forgot what I was talking about, but I'll just get on my last point with this game. Um, DeAndre Hopkins had a quiet game. Brian Hoyer just spread the football around. He threw it more to his tight end, Ryan Griffin, who actually got his first touchdown of the season, and... Some people are starting to like him a lot. I don't know because I just don't trust any of the Houston tight ends. I really miss Owen Daniels, who is now with Denver. Yep. And with his coach, Kubiak. But um, if he shapes up, great. Somebody has to. And I don't like Fedorowicz, so I'll take Griffin or Graham. But I don't know, Bill. Do you think it's better that they keep going for the tight end? Because like, that, that's what... Lombardi's style was always throw it to Ebron or um, Pettigrew, but you saw that just throwing it to them doesn't really win you games. Yeah, I mean, what every like every like every team, the tight end is a useful part of a offense to include very in in chunks. You know, you can't you can't just focus on tight end and throw to the tight end. He's an integral part of the offense to keep the chains moving or a five yard completion on first down or, you know, second down and three, you throw it to him and get six, you know, that's the sort of stuff a tight end should be used for unless you have a special one like Jimmy Graham, which the CLC Hawks were not using him correctly. And when they did, now they lost him for the season. I mean, yeah, that that, but that will be for a little later. Um, and uh, uh, Gronkowski. Yeah. But um, I I don't think it's wise to cling to them all the time. Correct. Because 
Unless they're Gronk and can get around double coverage, I don't think it's a bright idea because you still need to use your wide receivers. You have to keep sp you can spread the ball, but I think it's still better to target your wide receivers a little more, especially when you have DeAndre Hopkins who is hitting his prime. He would make a joke out of Malcolm Browner, but he didn't throw it to him. TJ Yates had the right mentality, and that's why he looked better in that game because he kept throwing the ball to Hopkins, and he knew he could catch them all. But I wanted him to break that record at the at the Saint with against the Saints because while the Saints lose their touchdown record, Hopkins makes his own. But it might happen against the uh, the over uh, the over uh, what are you, overrated. I lost my train of thought there. The overrated Den uh, Buffalo Bills almost said Denver Broncos. Actually, I'll be honest. I want Houston to play Denver. I want to see who's the better defense. His and yeah, it would be it would be a three to six game, Bill. <laughs> and Brock Osweiler wouldn't be throwing for any freaking touchdowns. I'm telling he you need, that if, right Okay, now. he's a new quarterback technically. Even if he's been in the league for a few years, he needs to get inaugurated by getting sacked by Watt. It's tradition. I mean, he's not. Osweiler is not the most mobile guy, and you got. You got the beast coming at you. You don't want the beast coming at you. Hold on a second. Sorry about that, Bill. Continue what you were saying. Um, bleh, I, I, my were, train you, of thought. You're saying that he's not the most mobile quarterback. Yeah, Osweiler's not the most mobile quarterback, and I feel like getting hit by the beast would be like a deer in headlights. The beast would win. Yeah, but. Okay, you know how we're talking Luke Keekley in that? I have this question for you. There are many times where Clowney gets, keeps getting close to sacks, but ju they just throw it right away. But, you know, Drew Brees, as much as he, his team sucks, he's still a good quarterback. He's just in a very bad system. But, um... <laughs> yep. All right, so here's my qu my thing. Cl Clowney and Keekley are the ex in the exact same type of position. Unless this is the different st structure of defense. Because Clowney is a outside linebacker, and same with Keekley. They're both outside linebackers. How come I see Keekley tend to block uh, receivers and tight ends more, whereas Clowney usually tends to go after the quarterback? Yeah, I feel like it's part of... Keekley is a gifted athlete in that he can... He's gifted in that he can cover tight ends really well and he can cover slot receivers really well. He's got a, he's got a unique skill set whereas Jadavion Clowney he's unblockable on the offensive line a lot of the time and he's got obviously a unique skill set himself because he can go through most offensive linemen no matter who they are. And obviously you want to put your best pass rushers going after the quarterback or containing the quarterback. And typically you want to contain the quarterback. And if it's people like Drew Brees, you want to have as many people in his face as possible. You don't want him getting comfortable. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, I was just wondering about that because I, I wonder why Clowney doesn't... He sometimes will break away to cover somebody, but he usually tends to go after the quarterback. But I'm still waiting for him to get more sacks. He needs it's, to get more sacks. Just It's also what he's really comfortable doing, you know? Yeah. Uh, Clowney might not feel comfortable going into pass coverage, whereas Keekley is... Uh, Keekley has been known to do it even in college, you know? Yeah. But, um... I'm just saying, I'm really liking this Houston front seven because it's finally gelling, and I think that was what happened. Over the bye, they really gelled it together. You notice that, technically no, it was after the Dolphins loss. That's when they got their shit together and started playing mean. Beating a scrub team like the Titans was all it took to start building momentum, and now I can only, I can only say either the Bills and or Patriots can, you know, tone it down, but I kind of hope that it doesn't come to that. After your team gets embarrassed, it's always a good catalyst for playing much better. Of course you know that right now because of the Lions, but Martha, yep. Martha, Martha Ford for uh, president. I almost called her Martha Stewart again. 
<laughs> I mean, she's just as ruthless as Martha Stewart. I love how Martha Stewart is friends with Snoop Dogg. That never, <laughs> that never stops making me laugh. But anyway, that's all I've got on Houston. All right, Bill. So, any other games worth noting? Because I really got only the Cardinals and the Raiders to talk about. All right, I, I, I want to just get this out of the way. The last two minutes of the Cleveland Baltimore game was some of the worst football I've ever watched in my life. <laughs> okay. I mean, it was the worst thing I've ever seen. I mean, here's here's a sequence of plays. Austin Davis runs forward, slides inbounds, forcing them to use a timeout. Uh, they run. They run a running play with nine seconds left. They run a running play with nine seconds left. Now, what happens if your running back breaks that and gets tackled at the ten yard line? Then you're going to overtime. I mean, I, I my brain. It, the thing about it was is that it was the worst. They couldn't get the call into the huddle on time. It, the Cleveland Browns, that last two minutes was, there was three drives in the last two minutes of that game. One by Cleveland, Baltimore got the football back, and then Cleveland got it back and almost kicked a game-winning field goal, and that was the last two minutes of the game. That's, that's, that is, oh my God. I, I was sitting there watching that. I was like, uh, I, I'm, you know, you're watching Austin Davis run. I'm like, you got to get out of bounds. You got to get out of bounds. He slides. He slides inbounds. Now, you're taught in college or even high school, you're taught to run out of bounds. Preserve the clock. Preserve the clock preserve the clock situational football situational football it's the last two minutes of the game how do you not know the situation and you have an open b line for the for the um uh, for the sideline get out of bounds preserve the timeout and you you can still do a quick pass play over the middle get you 10 more yards make it an easier field goal because part of the reason why that got blocked is because it was a 50-yard field goal and Koontz had to kick at a lower trajectory, which means it's easier to be blocked to get it to the to the uh, uprights to get it through. So he has to kick it lower to get it there, and it was easily blocked, and, you know, it was a return for a touchdown. Yeah. All right, so the two games I want to talk about the Cardinals. I thought they were going to punish the 49ers for existing, but they played ugly. And the 49ers only gave up the game because they were just playing horrible defense and getting flagged all the time. Like <laughs> they had the longest play oh. in the reds, they had the longest drive in the red zone the whole season, I think. There were two pass interference or some defensive penalties against San Francisco, and it was like third down just to give them another set of downs. I think it took eight tries to get a touchdown on that drive. Yep. Pretty sad. I want to add one thought onto this game. And it was one of the worst officiated games in the history of the NFL. And Pete Morelli is a joke of a referee. He's still a joke. Will always be a joke. He couldn't figure out if it was second or third down. It took seven minutes for the officials to get it right when it was already right. They switched it to second down. They switched the time. Uh, they switched it on the scoreboard to second down. Then they had to huddle up and then come to the conclusion that it was correct and third down even though it was already third down, and they should have never switched in the first place. Peter Morelli is a joke, and he needs to go. Horrible. But anyway, the other team I want to talk about... Well, my point was the Cardinals can play ugly, just as they can yep. play flashy, but 
I that mean I know to me that it makes me realize they can take take on anybody. Even if they're playing ugly, they can come from behind. They can play while they're ahead, or they can play close. I think that's a great. It's not good to play ugly though. You always want to play better. But I like I like that they still grinded it out and and ran out the clock in the fourth quarter. What was that? Yep. That was a weird noise. What? No, it was me. No, that was my mouth. Oh, it sounded like static. <laughs> Alright, so anyway, last game, I want to talk about the Raiders. They played kind of a shootout against Mariota, but, and it played, it was ugly. It was in the rain, too. But Derek Carr, I, I, uh, this is this guy is being my favorite young quarterback. While I see a bunch of NFL media kissing ass to Teddy Bridgewater, Blake Bortles, and, um, and Mariota, I'm like, okay, I'm start. I feel like I'm one of the few who's on the Jameis Winston and Derek Carr sides because they those guys are shaping up. Derek Carr had a bad first year, but he had bad coaches, I think, which now have changed. No need to bury the balls anymore. And now Derek Carr, now that he's got weapons. I'm I can guarantee you Crabtree is gonna get the money. He's gonna get paid. That's because he's old. He's the older receiver. So you have the young gun. That's the young gun quarterback, a veteran receiver that can make that can make some catches that rookies can't usually make with the few exceptions. And of course the young the youngest receiver, uh Amari Cooper. Just I'm just saying it's going to be a nice offense when they get older cuz I don't know if they will still make the playoffs. I don't think they will. But you know what? It's a nice stepping stone to go from 3 or 4 wins to now being in the hunt for the playoffs. It's like it's like a rebounding level like Houston did last year when they were 2-14 went 9 and 7 with four yep. quarterbacks. So my, mostly this was with uh Derek Carr. Though keep in mind he did get uh knocked out for a few plays in um at the beginning and he still came back and won. So I think he's fine, but I I'm just glad. I'm proud to see Derek Carr, at least one of the Carr brothers is succeeding so far and I hope it gets better. But they need to get a little, like, get an offensive lineman, get a safety or two, and replace Woodson whenever he retires. And that's a, that's a mean team you don't want to play, especially at home. The black hole. I don't want them to move. Let it be the Rams and the Chargers, but please not the, please not the Raiders. Let them. The Raiders are, the Raiders are definitely moving. That 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 uh that stadium is not. They're in a lease agreement and. The lease agreement is year to year. Yeah, but if they're and playing better, all of a sudden, and that and that stadium gets money, or gets more money because of it, I think they will yeah. stay. I think it's a matter well, of which team plays the best. It, well, the, the thing about it is, is that the Raiders pay the play there. It's it's not owned by them. That's what I mean. Well, don't they get so, offered to stay there? They don't get no. Because, they don't get because, any discount rates. Yeah. They they don't get a discount rate. They they have to pay a lot of money to play there, and I don't see how. I I mean I don't want Oakland to leave, but uh, the only way they're not going to leave is if they get a stadium, and it, it's looking like they're not getting a stadium in Oakland. I don't know. Like I said, it, they seriously have to go to the fucking playoffs to stay. But, look, we know the Chargers are going. We, we, that's pretty much guaranteed. The fans know it, too. That's the worst part. So it's really the Rams or the Raiders. And when you think of New York, they have both an NFC and an AFC team. So I think it's only fair that it be an NFC-AFC team, too. I mean, Because, I'm, let, let's I'm, think about it. You have the Raiders and Chargers, who are in the same division, by the way. It gets really complicated. The the Raider the Raiders are going to stick in the NFC or in they're gonna, they're gonna stick on the West Coast and they're gonna move to Los Angeles and then it's a fight between San Diego and St Louis who's gonna go to uh, Los Angeles and I think it's gonna be the Chargers and then I think one of the two teams the Raiders or the Chargers are going to be switched to the NFC. When's the last time this happened? Seattle, I think, when they were AFC. They went NFC. Yep. That was uh, about 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. But, um... Oh, uh, anyway. 15, actually. Well, there's a, well, we won't know for a while, but... Anyway, Bill, I think it's time we start talking Week 13 picks. Are you ready? Oh, man. 
Heck yeah, man. I stopped the bleeding this week, but can I turn it around? Probably not. Bill, start us off with Thursday Night Football. The Thursday night game is the Green Bay Packers at the Detroit Lions. My picks still stand. I'm going to go with Detroit to sweep the Packers. Kind of a shame that their record isn't better, because what a way to make the playoffs to sweep this team. But who knows? And I also have the Detroit Lions. Uh... I'm cautiously optimistic, but, you know, I, I don't take anything for granted. I got the Lions winning in a close game. Next up, the Sunday games. The New York Jets at the New York Giants. The battle for New York. This is what I've been waiting for. I have the Jets, who have a better defense and have better talent all around compared to the Giants, who's all offense and no defense give it to the Jets. Even though they're the away team, it's really a home game for both of them. I have the J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets as well defeating the New York Giants. I feel like Fitzpatrick's just on throw all over that defense. Next up, the Arizona Cardinals at the St. Louis Rams. I'm giving it to Arizona. I would be a little hesitant here, but you know, I'm going to trust, I trust Roos Arians. He is my coach of the year, though it's really going to go to Ron Rivera come the, end of the, or come the end of the season. I've got the Cardinals. I also have the Cardinals. I feel like this is going to be a blowout. I feel like Jeff Fisher is going to be fired because of this game. Oh, boy, that's, that's unfortunate. Next game. Next up, the Atlanta Falcons at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I have the Buccaneers taking this one. They're actually going to sweep the Falcons. Oh, boy. Winston's going to get three touchdowns, two to Mike Evans. We are agreeing a lot this week. What is going on? I also have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Atlanta Falcons just don't look right right now, and uh, the Buccaneers are are looking really good. Oh, don't worry, Bill. I'm certain we'll have a few we disagree on. We usually do. Next up, the Seattle Seahawks at... Minnesota Today, I'm a Vikings fan. I have Adrian Peterson running all around that Seahawks front seven come the second half. I have the Vikings winning and pretty much securing a, a wild card or, or uh, division spot. I also have the Vikings beating the Seahawks. I just don't see how Seahawks are done beat the Vikings. Especially with the loss of Jimmy Graham. They sure could have used as many weapons against this. But I will say, it is going to be a run-heavy game because that's that that the, their secondaries are going to play out of their minds rejecting uh, passes. So, heavy run game. This, this game, if Rawls plays as the hype builds up to him, this might be the most run yards in a game we've seen in a while. Next game. Next up, the San Fran 49ers at the Chicago Bears. I, I'm i going to be honest. I trust Jay Cutler much better than freaking, uh, what's that dude's name? Blaine Gabbert. Blaine Gabbert. I have the Bears going 6-6 six and six this week. I also got the Bears. The 49ers are not going to be able to stop them at all. Of course not. Next up, the Jacksonville Jaguars at... The Tennessee Titans. This might be one we disagree on. I have the Jaguars winning this. It's going to come down to the end, like I've said. I have the Jags taking this from Mariota in overtime. I also have the Jaguars. I, I can't see how Tennessee is going to stop Jacksonville. Jacksonville is a surprise team this year, and I, I've been sort of on the I've been on the bandwagon since the beginning. Yeah, but they've always find ways to fuck it up. But I think in this game, where two teams always find ways to blow games, I have the Jaguars coming out because the Titans, they are the least talented team in the NFL. What do they have on offense or defense that's worth noting? Really, not much. What Delaney Walker, their, maybe? Their their run defense is pretty good. And they have, but they have no runners. They don't even have a running back whose name sounds like good enough to, you know, be a three-down guy. They got nothing. All right, next game. Next, next up is the Houston Texans at the Buffalo Bills. I want to hear your pick first, Bill. I've got the Houston Texans smothering the Buffalo Bills offense. I feel like they've been a little overrated, and they will come... 
they will not nah, both sides of the football for the Buffalo Bills. They're both overrated. Uh, Texans offense will move the football on the defense, and the defense will hold the Bills back. The Bills running game to me is what will determine if they have a shot, but I don't know. I like LaShawn McCoy. I think he's good, but I think he's going to get stuffed by J.J. Watt and the Texans' defense. This is a game that's a defensive slugfest. I'm calling 13-7, to and I'm giving it to Houston because, oh boy, if you may as well start every Texans or Texan and Bill defensive player because it's going to be ugly. <laughs> Next up, the Baltimore Ravens at... The Miami Dolphins. This one we might have to split. I'm going to give it to the Dolphins, and Dominic and Sue is going to sack Matt Schaub. <laughs> and I am picking the Baltimore Ravens to defeat the Miami Dolphins. See, I told you we'd get one sooner the, or later. The captain of the defense, his team, his team, the Dolphins, the Dominic and Sue's team is going to lose and they're going to get humiliated by the Baltimore Ravens with their backup quarterback, their backup running back, and their backup wide receivers. Oh, God. The the injury bug has plagued, I think, the Ravens the most. Seriously. I always wanted the Ravens to suffer, but I think this is overkill. I just like when they narrowly miss the playoffs all the time. Next up, the Cincinnati Bengals. At the Cleveland Browns. Here's a bomb. I think they're going to drop a 30-point bomb on um, the on the Browns if they don't start Manziel. Just start Manziel. Austin's not good enough. Come on. You know it. Oh, my God. This is going to be over at halftime. The Bengals will be up 42 nothing at halftime, and they're going to take out all their starters. The Bengals, easy win. Four o'clock games, the Kansas City Chiefs at the Oakland This Raiders. is the only game I see the Chiefs losing this for the rest of the season. The black hole consumes, and it desires the Chiefs and the Chiefs' kingdom. I have the Raiders winning this. I've got the Kansas City Chiefs playing suffocating defense. They've been playing really well the last few weeks. The, it's going to continue, and the Chiefs will win. Oh, you see, I would like to agree there, but... I told you Khalil Mack would sack Mariota. He did it once. He's going to do it on Alex Smith. Next up, the Denver Broncos at the San Diego Chargers. Oh, we'll just own the AFC West. Why don't you, CBS? I have the Broncos. Brock Osweiler's hype train doesn't stop. I also got the Broncos, but it's only because their defense that they win. Uh, it's going to be probably a 13-7 game where the Broncos barely score any points on offense. Next up, the Philadelphia Eagles at the New England Patriots. Okay, this would have been a slaughter if they had all their weapons. I would have called a 55-point bomb, but it's not happening. I have the Patriots winning this, like, 21-13. to 13. I have a slaughter. <laughs> I got the Patriots with their backup wide receivers just destroying and torching the Eagles. After watching that game, I don't know how the Eagles play defense. Holy God. Oh, well, yeah. That's a good point. Next game. <laughs> Next up, the Carolina Panthers at the New Orleans Saints. I'm telling you, the Panthers aren't losing any more games. I have the Panthers winning. Just dropping a 40-point bomb on the Saints. There's going to be a lot of blowouts here. I also got the Panthers crushing the Saints. I mean, absolutely crushing them. The Sunday night game, the Indianapolis Colts at the Pittsburgh Steelers. I really hope Ben Roethlisberger starts. Okay, Bill, I'm going to be honest. If he starts, I have the Steelers winning in a shootout, a near shootout. But if he's not starting, I'm giving it to the Colts. Can I, do you think I could do that? Yeah. Yeah. We'll know on Sunday, so it's fine. Uh, either way, for me, I got the Steelers. That that indie defense is absolutely the worst defense in the NFL. If, They're terrible. If uh, uh, Jacoby Jones starts for the Steelers, he just should follow uh, TJ Yates' advice. You know how TJ Yates says, I mean, throw it to Hopkins? Just throw it to Antonio Brown. Just throw it in, into that defense. That defense can't make plays. <laughs> it literally is the worst defense. They, even if you threw it into their hands, they would drop it. 
Next up, the Monday night game, the Dallas Cowboys at the Washington football team. I have the Washington football team blowing out the Cowboys 35-6. to six. I have a... I have a closer game. I have the Washington football team winning and capturing a lead in the division. Oh god, they f with the with the other two teams losing. Oh boy. I don't want to see Jay Gruden happy in talking in December or no or January. No. I don't want them in there. They don't de none of them deserve to go. Let's just take them out and put let Detroit or some other team get in. Yep. All right, Bill. Next the Thursday night game next week. And the Thursday night game next week is the Minnesota Vikings at the Arizona Cardinals. All this prime time that Arizona deserves. I have the Cardinals punishing the Vikings. It'll be a closer match, but I think the Cardinals will just take it. I also have the Cardinals. I mean, their offense is just lethal. Oh, by the way, by the way, with this win, the Cardinals will have secured their division. Just want to make a note oh. of that. All right, Phil. Yep. You have the you have the Cardinals as well. Yep. yep. All right then. Yep. We we've done our job. I have nothing else to say. What about you, Bill? I think we're in for another wild, wacky week of football. All right. We'll see you guys in week 14.